How doing everybody? Kent Howard, Green Mountain Defense. Got my wife Sophia Howard out here with me as well. Today Hi. we're shooting, reviewing, discussing, etc. The Glock 43. Two. Up. Nice, very nice. Oh. Very nice. Target. We've got two examples of the Glock 43. We've got mine from, you know, early on in production. It is wearing XS Big Dot sights and a Streamlight TLR6. Sophie's is a Talo edition with the orange fire dot, whatever you want to call it, sight up front and the rear U notch in the back. Uh, her gun also has some, I believe, anyway, the Talo gun has a a little bit better trigger and uh, that's, well, that's really about it for the Talo distributor exclusive model but that's the one that she's running. Sophie and I have been out here for the last couple hours. I mean, we have been shooting the shit out of these guns. We went through, I'm going to say 400 rounds just because, you know, I didn't count. But we went through um, a little less than half of this guy. Um, quite a lot of ammo has gone downrange. Uh Sheriff doesn't shoot all the time. She does carry a good bit. She doesn't shoot as much as I'd like her to, but she does carry. Uh, so give us an idea of when and how you carry that gun. Uh, well, I don't carry at work. Uh, not, not supposed to. Um, so I carry when I'm in the car and when I'm out in the woods walking the dogs. Um, concealed carry out with family. So pretty much any time when I'm not at work. And I'll either carry mainly in my purse, or if I'm in the woods, out with the dogs, I will carry on my person. And when she says she's not supposed to carry, or we're not going to say what she does for, for a living, but let's just leave it at, not only is she not supposed to carry by policy, legally it's kind of iffy, and quite frankly, 
tactically a or from a from a standpoint of would she be able to use a gun in that situation it's almost one of the few situations that it's more dangerous to have a gun than not so i'm going to leave it there um guys want a private message and talk about it or whatever i, I may or may not entertain that but bottom line she's doing the right thing we've made a decision we've talked about it um so i don't want to see a thousand comments about oh you carry all the time i don't care i carry everywhere no you don't not when you do what she does for a living anyhow So, you've been out here for a couple hours with me. It took you, I'm gonna say, three, four mags to get back in the groove. Yeah. Is that a fair statement? That's fair. But even when you're out of the groove, even even at your worst, were you missing your silhouette? Were you missing your target? Maybe twice, but no. So, and and again, you'll see on the on the footage. We're not talking like we're standing there all summer and making like perfect shots from five feet. We were doing some dynamic shooting today. We did some, we did some drills from from draws. We did some non-standard response stuff. We did a lot of movement. We did reloads. We we worked these guns pretty hard, and Sophie did actually pretty well uh, for for a person who hasn't shot, you know, in in a considerable amount of time. Um, what is it about, now Sophie's gone through a couple generations of guns, and I'm, I'm focusing on Sophie a little bit here because I think the Glock 43 makes a fantastic ladies gun. Oh, yeah. um, Sophie's going to pull her IWB holster off right now. By the way, I hope you guys like the format. This is the, uh, Mr. Nut and Fancy has his tabletop reviews. This is the truck bed top lighter review thing. Anyway, <laughs> Sophie's got this Black Hawk, um, inside the waistband holster with the clip on it. It's a Kydex holster, adjustable retention. Um, she real, she wears this thing every time she's wearing the gun on her person. And then uh, even when the gun goes into her purse, she kind of she kind of orients it in such a way that this clip hangs up and she can draw the gun right out of her purse. Works out really well for her. Um, so, hon, as compared to your other guns, and, and so we're clear, her other guns have been a Glock 26 and then a uh, Charter, Charter Arms, Arms Undercover revolver. thingamabobber piece of crap revolver for $299.99. Um, but let's compare it just for fairness sake. Let's talk about this gun versus your Glock 26 and what you like better about this one. Uh, well, the... The 26 was pretty bulky when I didn't, well, even when I carried it on my person, uh, it, it was still comfortable, but it was a little bit more bulky. Uh, this one is obviously slimmer and single stacked. Uh, it's just slimmer and it's easier to carry, uh, smoother on the body. So what she's talking about, she's, she's trying to throw in the technical term, the single stack, meaning that the magazine, and these are charged up, which is why they're pointing at you, not us. Um, 
there's only one round on top of the other round on top of the other round on top of the other round. That's a single stack magazine. What that does for Sophie is it makes it a thinner overall profile. It's a thinner gun. So when this gun is down in between the outside of your belt and your waistband, it takes up less space. Less space is more comfortable. It's not as chunky. It's not as bulky. It's not as heavy. Um, if you read the specifications on a, a, the difference between, and by the way, she likes her 26 and she shoots it well, and that thing ain't going nowhere. Nope. Um, but when you read the specifications on these guns, and I don't remember the exact specs, but I think this one's like an inch thick, and the 26 is an inch point one point one eight inches thick or something like that. Not a huge difference. Not a huge difference numerically, but when you put them on your body, you can feel a really big difference. Mm -hmm. I carry mine in a crossbreed, uh, I think it's the mini tuck holster, and it has the adaptation for this light laser combo, the TLR6. Um, I walk around anywhere, any day, all the time. Uh, my profession, I, you know, I can carry, um, so I don't, I don't have that problem of taking it on and off all the time. I leave the crossbreed holster on and I get right to work with it. Um, Gun's short, it's light, it's concealable. Sophie does a great job with it. Um, Trigger smooth. If you're comparing this, if you're in the market and you're saying, my God, you know, what about a shield or what about an XDS or what about a PPS or what about a freaking uh, car CM9 or a car PM9 or, a, I mean, we could, all day long, we could sit here and talk about guns that are about yay long, about yay high, about yay thick, right? somewhere between six and seven round mag capacity, one additional on the chamber. Um, first of all, yeah, maybe a little bit of a Glock fanboy, admittedly, here, even though I'm rocking uh, SIG stuff right now, because I'm kind of becoming a SIG fanboy too. It's kind of like guns as it turns out. Anyway, um, I've tried, me, myself personally, I've tried an XDS, I've tried a Beretta Nano, I've tried a Ruger LC9. Well, there's single stack, small, thin little guns if I tried. And when I say tried, I don't mean like, oh, I went and shot them. I mean, I owned at one time all three of those little guns. And for me, this worked out the best. Ergonomically, physically, reliability wise. I had some sort of problem with all those, all three of those other guns, by the way. Um, the LC9 was just like, vomiting out its internals every five minutes. I absolutely got a Lemon LC9. I got one of the originals and that thing just, it was like three trips back to Ruger and I said, the heck with it, it's over. Um, the Beretta Nano, that thing ran great with 147 grain hollow points. It did not run great with range ammo. Yes, I understand self-defense ammo is, you know, what you're gonna be carrying on the street, but I couldn't even get through a range session with the gun without having one or two malfunctions of a mag. At a certain point, it's like, yeah, okay, malfunction drills are great, but I gotta get on with my freaking day here. And I mean, weird, crazy, stupid malfunctions, you know, stove pipes and double feeds, and, you know, all kinds of stupidity. Probably a super reliable gun with the high test stuff, um, you know, kind of the, the BMW. I'm not a BMW guy, I'm a pickup truck guy. Uh, I want it to fire up and run every time. These Glocks run, I, I can't find a brand or type of ammo that they won't run, I just can't. Sophie can, in her 26, she can limp wrist to the point where she can get some brass up here to the face or just kind of barely hiccuping out of the gun, but you know, that's even a rarity. So from a reliability standpoint, I'm sold on the Glocks. From an aftermarket support standpoint, what I mean by aftermarket support, Holsters, lights, lasers, uh, extra parts, extra mags. Anywhere you go, you can get stuff for this gun. Um, so that makes me happy. That's a plus. For me, and this is a big important thing for me, I'm a lefty. I'm, I'm a southpaw shooter. I'm extremely left eye dominant, and I shoot left-handed. I can swap the mag release over to the right side of this gun so that I can properly index it. And, and I don't own pistols that I can't do that with. End of story. I do not own Palmer pistols, I can't do that with. So, that just is what it is, kind of same thing. No external safeties, no other BS, no grip safety to get in your way, like on the XDS. For me, it just, it is what it is, it's a great gun, I love it. 
you don't have to love it, but I'm just letting you know kind of where we're at on it. Oh, gun comes up on target. One round, high center chest, up. Slow and steady, put the round right where it belongs. Up. Good fundamentals, good grit. Perfect. Perfect, just like that. Spend all day and make a headshot. Okay. I don't care how long it takes you. Up. We've got two examples now, you know, not, not many families have multiples of the same gun. Neither of them have a problem. We've got, uh, you know, a handful of mags. We've got the mags with the extended base plates on them here from awesome. Lock. Yeah, they are awesome. Talk about making a difference. Um, these mags are Glock factory ones, the ones that come with the gun with the extended base plate. Um, we're not running Terran tactical base plates that extend the capacity of the mags. These are the same capacity, just with this little little pinky addition right here as opposed to no pinky addition and we're just kind of hanging out here in outer space so that being said we're going to uh, stop doing the talking we're going to let the guns do the talking thanks for checking it out visit us online www.greenmountaindefense.com check out our facebook at green mountain defense uh, where else YouTube.com slash Green Mountain Defense and call us. Call us, please. Check us out, book a trip, come up here to Vermont, do some shooting with us. We'd love to have you out. Um, Sophie does the cooking, I do the shooting and sarcasm. And uh, other than that, make sure to get out and vote, please. Please, please, please. If you believe in your firearms freedoms, and I know you do, or you wouldn't be watching this. There's only one right choice to make this November. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to discuss it. I don't want to see your bullshit in comments. You've only got one choice. I know it's a sucky choice. I don't like it either, but we got to do what we got to do. Make the right call. Get out there and vote. www.greenmountaindefense.com. Facebook at Green Mountain Defense. Thanks, guys.